So the first question is, are we alone in the universe? And when I say are we alone, I mean are we unique? Uh, are, are, is this the only planet where life has ever existed? Um, so that, I think that's a really fundamental question about life. So maybe, maybe we're not unique, but are we special? Maybe life is not abundant throughout the universe, but there are other examples. Uh, I just want to point out throughout human history, we have always thought we were special and we've always found out we were less special than we thought. Um, so, you know, but it's an important question still to ask. Uh, and then, so that's coming at that question from one way. We can also ask from the other direction, where did we come from? I mean, of course, we know we probably, probably came from Earth, but we don't really understand how life develops. So how does life get started? How does it evolve? And then really, how conducive is the Earth environment to life? We tend to think of, of Earth as the perfect place for the cradle of life, but that may not be true. We may be very lucky to actually be here at all, and maybe a place like Titan is a better place to start life. We don't know, so we have to study. Uh, but we can actually test hypotheses very easily on Mars. Uh, and that's because it's the most Earth-like of our neighbors. We share very similar geologic histories and evolutions, and we also are very similar in composition. So this is a world that has been through much of what we've been through. So it's a great place for us to test hypotheses about life. Okay, so what I'm showing you here is just um, a broad geologic time scale for both Earth and Mars. Earth is on the top, Mars is a lower down, and I'm, I'm showing billions of years. So this is pretty deep time here. Um, so I've marked some important uh, times on both Earth and Mars. Uh, I want to show you one thing. So the, uh, the thing right at the end, at 4.4 billion years, uh, that's the oldest known mineral grain that we've ever discovered on Earth. Um, so that's pretty old. But actually, most rocks on Earth are much younger. Um, you can see that it's actually closer to this side to the today. If you were to go outside and pick up a rock, it's probably you know, in this time period, so it's relatively modern. But if you compare that to Mars, you'll see there's actually a really big difference. On Mars, the surface is much older. The rocks that are there now formed billions of years ago. And that's just because Mars has never had uh, as dynamic a surface and in particular has not had plate tectonics. So on Earth, we have this conveyor belt that is re constantly recycling uh, rocks. So that means it's actually really hard for us to study deep time. And I also want to point out that the earliest evidence we have of life on Earth in the geologic record is around 4.0 billion years ago, right? So it's pretty ancient. And we haven't actually had anything but microbial life until very recently. You can see over here, I've got like dinosaurs, et cetera, over here. We're et cetera, right? We have barely uh, been on this planet. So for most of the history of our planet, life has been microbial. So now if we go to Mars, and look at this time when life definitely existed on Earth, the earliest time, what do we see? Well, we can see it's in this uh, pink box here. This is when the landing sites for both Curiosity and Perseverance were filled with water. These were lake worlds at, this, at the time. We had a ton of lakes um, in Gale, Jezero, and other places on the surface of Mars. We have established with these landed missions that Mars was incredibly habitable at this time. So it's not crazy to imagine that maybe it was inhabited. Life had enough time on Earth to evolve. So that's true on Mars as well. So the question is, you know, if it was habitable, was it inhabited? And again, these ancient rocks actually provide us a window into deep time. Uh, we don't have these rocks anymore on Earth, but we can study on Mars an intact, habitable environment in a way that we can't on Earth anymore. So when we study ancient rocks on Mars, it gives us a much better understanding of our own origins and the environments in which we originated. So how, how can we do this, right? So I've already told you from the meteorite from Mars, you know, morphologies are not enough. We actually need more lines of evidence. And that way we can build a circumstantial story about whether or not life is likely to be shown in these rocks. So we have all of these things you can look at here, including you know, structures and morphologies are really important, but also minerals, organic molecules, you know, general chemistry, isotopic information. These are all things that we look at in ancient rocks on Earth to determine the presence of ancient life. 
But this is actually really hard sometimes to assess remotely uh, with our spacecraft instruments. Our robotic uh, scientists are incredible, but they can't do everything. And it can be very hard to sometimes get all of these lines of evidence um, with just our rover payload instruments. And so in contrast, when you take a, a rock, an ancient rock from Earth, you can bring it to your laboratory, you can analyze it multiple times, you can even save parts of it for future analyses for techniques that don't exist. Yeah, and that happens. We develop new techniques all the time, so saving samples is really important. So, you know, sample return from Mars would change everything. We would really learn a lot. And luckily, we are doing that. So as part of the Perseverance mission, we're going to choose samples, and then we're going to cache them for a future mission to return to Earth, um, which is We've never done this before. The only samples we have from Mars are meteorites thus far. So these should be arriving to Earth as um, no later than 2031, which again sounds far, but is actually just around the corner. Um, and I want to point out, that no matter what the results are, we are going to be surprised. You know, we, we have an idea of what we might see, but we have no idea what Mars is going to throw at us. That's what I've learned from you know, 15 years of, of Mars science. You, know, you think you have Mars figured out, but you, we definitely don't. So there's going to be surprises in there. And no matter what those results, whether or not we see signs of ancient life uh, or not, you know, that's going to teach us something really fundamental. And so this is really why we explore. This is why we do field science, to actually get these answers. Sometimes the best way is just to go and, and look at these samples. So, um, with that, I just because this is a breaking barriers session, I just want to show you a picture of my engineering operations team for the ChemCam instrument on Curiosity. Yet you may notice something. <laughs> so yeah, um, this is a very unusual team uh, right now, but I'm really hoping that as time goes on, this is going to be less and less remarkable to have a team that is all women engineers. So thanks. <laughs>